up at 4.30 today morning because I made that mistake yesterday. Ugh. Luckily I had no problem finding a pullout after I crossed the border. Right now we're on Highway 395 approaching Spokane. I'm going to take the Northern Corridor. See if the sun comes up and allows me to allows me to shoot this video or not. Yeah, because I couldn't get or I forgot to take in my 10 hour off yesterday. I was forced to uh, sleep right after crossing the border because I didn't have hours to run in the U.S. I want to pass this car, but I'm not sure if the guy behind me is a motorcycle or a car with one light on. I can guess a car with one light on. Just can't see yet, it's too dark. Ah, it's a pickup with a headlight. One headlight, okay. Mr. Pickup, you're going to gain some speed there and get yourself in here. That's an old Dodge, all right. So, yeah, across the border, no issues. Nice little pullout shortly after the border. It's not like a gravel pullout, it's like a fine, silty, packed, it's like a very fine dirt packed down pullout, parked in there before and it was plowed out nicely. Had two problems though. Stepped out of my truck and I stepped right into dog poo. Yay! That was awfully kind of whoever was there. Walking their dog and didn't clean up after them. Normally I turn off over here and go through downtown Spokane, but this is obviously a better route. I don't know why I never took this route before. Avoid downtown Spokane altogether. Northern Corridor. Future 395. In the future, it's going to go all the way to I-90. So that didn't wasn't pleasant last night. And then of course last night it was plus six degrees. The whole pullout's a little bit slushy, a little, you know, a little snow. I moved the truck a couple times to make sure that the wheels don't, you know, settle themselves into divots. Well, today it was minus seven in the morning at 4.30. I was stuck on perfectly flat ground. I guess the wheel still did, had enough of a divot to not want to move. I couldn't see anything sunk in anywhere. And I guess also when you've got 30 wheels, when you were parked on the wet slushy ground and now it's 
frozen ground, just that itself makes a divot, right? Right away notice that the spinning tires, I've learned that from the past, don't keep trying. So I jumped out, took the tire chains off and threw them in front of the axles. I didn't put them over the tires, I just tossed them under the axle, put it right against the rubber and then pulled forward and hoped that the chains would spin themselves under the tires. So I'm like, okay, spin forward, jumped out. I'm like, yep, they spun themselves underneath the tires, but I'm still stuck. So I put it in gear. It would just rock like an inch. So I would put it in gear, rock at the inch and let it roll back. Rock the inch, roll back. And just kept rocking it. And I was like, like, hey, I'm getting a little bit further each with each rock. So I kept kept rocking it and all of a sudden it popped out of the little divots. I went and looked and looked like that. You can barely see there are divots and it's just frozen onto the ground. But when you're a heavy super bee, that's all it takes. Picked up the chains, threw them back on, made sure I didn't step in the dog poop again. And off I went. And I gave myself a little bit extra time. I wanted to be here. I wanted to be at the destination at 7.45. Technically it opened at 8, but usually they start unloading at 7.45. And I think I'll be there around 8, so. Should be good. a beautiful morning. Still have about 30, uh, GPS says 34 minutes to the destination. So half an hour to go. Unload this sucker and see where we're headed next. Only problem is I have to stop the end of the day today three hours earlier than normal because I started three hours earlier. Snow in forecast, watch for plows. At the roundabout, take the second exit. This is where the uh, freeway ends. And in the future, it's going to keep going south from here right to I-90. Right now, they are moving the train tracks so they can build the highway. So it's going to be many years before this highway is extended to I-90, but they're working on it. forced to take the exit ramp right now. At the roundabout, take the second exit to North Freya Street. the morning rush hour just starting so if I had 
had been him, I would have gone. The semi, I mean. Now we're driving under the future freeway. At the roundabout, take the first exit to North Freya Street. I don't like the big curbs on this thing. I'm gonna really try hard. This, at least the center's got a smaller curb. Any kind of snow and you're curbing the trailers. Well, I'm curving the trailers over that centerpiece, but... In one quarter mile, turn left on East Francis Avenue. So instead of dealing with downtown, you got to deal with this little section here. Some curvy roads, which is much better than downtown. Number 35 here, I believe. Train track's a dead end. I think I want to turn, turn here. Turn left at the traffic light. Yes, okay. So, I think it says yield on green. Hard to see. Left turn, yield on green. Okay, perfect. lights on. Invisible in my mirror until they're beside me. Everybody desperately trying to get past me before this turns into a two-lane highway. Hopefully they make this a four-lane a little bit further through too. some aggressive driving behind us. Mr. FedEx, aggressive driving, really aggressive driving. He was weaving between cars. The okay, pick up, are you gonna pass me or not? Give you lots of opportunity, even slow down for you. Nice if they four lane this section and took out some of these sharp corners. Of course, it's residential in here, so gotta work with all of that too. Not too dark. Don't have my phone screen 
because I don't have anywhere to mount my phone on in this truck. So I don't have a screen up so I can't see what I'm shooting. If you guys ever see me taking a road, you would uh, suggest a different road, let me know. It's like, why is he taking that road? Why does he take this road here instead? Let me know, because I might just do it. Like this one, perfect example. I have changed the way I go through Spokane because of you guys. Because you guys rock, that's why. rather take a little curvy road in the countryside even though I'm slow and big in here working hard to get over here but so are the other vehicles so much rather deal with a little countryside drive than go down downtown want to come this way. I don't never understand people like that. I would make the right hand turn, do a U-turn down the road, and then come back this way. Right here would be a perfect place to do it. over here. What kind of building is that? It's got a nice big, oh, maybe it's a school? Spokane Christian Center, so I'm not sure if it's a school or a church, but right maybe even a camp. But I would make the right-hand turn, go to that camp, do a U-turn, and then go the other way. You're not sitting there for half an hour waiting for an opening. close to the line. Oh, there's two goats fighting each other. <laughs> That's funny. Welcome to Smart Gardens. guy but a lot of traffic I think I'll just go a little slower and follow him for now actually it's cleared up right now let's go for it He's 
hard and the jake brakes. I thought my jake brakes sucked, but his must suck even more. reason he's gone into the hammer lane now but still falling way behind Okay, I gotta turn left in a mile, so let's go into the hammer lane as well. What is that beside us? It's got a big sleeper on it, that's for sure. A Volvo? I don't know my trucks. I have to look at the front logo. Did not like that hill. I'm matching his speed and he's only hauling a single trailer. But I'm in an automatic. He's manual. That was a Volvo. Yeah, I should have probably da I should have probably manually shifted lower there. It started in uh, second gear instead of first gear, so I wasn't paying attention on a hill like that. You really want to start in first gear. Message has arrived. Probably my next dispatch or something like that. We won't worry about it until we get to the delivery spot. Looking down at the call qualm, it's not flashing red, so it's not an important message, just a message, so probably my dispatch. If it was flashing red, I would pull over and read it. Because they can put priorities on the messages. In one quarter mile, turn left on East Trent Avenue.
flight. Yeah, just far enough that people can get around me. I'm still partially in the other lane. I guess I could read my message here. We're stopped. Driver Juan, head to Klesnikov. Headed to Calgary. Calgary Pallet, no tarp. Cool. Today is what, Thursday? Yeah, Thursday, so. I might not make it home this weekend. Yeah, I'm pretty, well, we'll see the timing and stuff, but that's one of those runs that, yeah, might not be going home this weekend. Well, that would kind of suck, but oh well. This time of year, it's hard to get loads. You take what you can get. It's a lot of semi-trailers on a train. Long red light. really long red light. And then of course I'm probably going to have to deal with the train down the road. Kind of an awkward lace-shaped corner. Angle makes it feel like Continue you would roll over ahead. easier on a if you had a top heavy load to come around that corner too quick. I could see truckers rolling over there. I think that train will be a problem and it's moving pretty slow.
the sun's still not up, everything's getting brighter. Saved myself that headache of going through downtown. I'm optimistic we're gonna have, we're gonna have a good day. I might even be able to make it to the border without having to take my half hour break first. We'll see how long it takes to get unloaded and then... Uh... Oh, great, the speed limit went up, but I did not increase my speed. I'll have to see how long it takes to get unloaded and I might be able to make it back to Canada before I have to take my mandatory half hour break. I prefer to take my off duty time where I'm loading. There's usually a lineup at Klasnikov and you can take your break there. While you're sitting in line waiting. I didn't sleep the best last night. It's hard to go to bed a couple hours earlier than normal. And then uh, the truck woke me up at night telling me I was low on voltage. I was on the laptop a little bit last night for about an hour and a half. and uh, had the inverter on, so I guess that drained enough voltage that it couldn't power the bunk heat through the whole night, so I had to idle for an hour about. Go back to sleep. And of course, as soon as I'm unloaded, I'm going to do a U-turn and go do this northern corridor again. And then head to Madeline Falls. I guess I won't take the, the, high, the freeway because I'm taking Highway 2 north. So, yeah, there's a better shortcut for that. But I, either way, I'm not going through downtown Spokane anymore. Yeah, three miles to go, I gotta turn off. See if we beat that train. I don't see it in my mirror. These red lights aren't helping us, so. But he is moving pretty slow, so I should be okay.
I just thought of something else. All my straps are going to be frozen solid too, aren't they? They were wet when I threw them. That's going to be fun rolling those up. Or the lack, the lack of fun. Of, uh, commercial buildings up this way. Obviously done all by the same contractor because they all look the same or very very close to the same. Probably cheaper if you use the same blueprint and just make small changes to them. see a train in my mirror so just watch it'll be an oncoming train or something like that <laughs> that's okay too we gotta wait for a train we gotta wait for a train have much snow here. In fact, I'd say they have Green no Anderson snow here. Turn right on North Parker Road. Doesn't look like snow, it just looks like frost. So strange. A few hours south and there's no snow. Trucks sign is for um, the left lane. Basically, trucks are allowed to turn off here to the right or keep going straight. We're not allowed to go left. Turn right on North Parker Road. And there is a train parked there, but he's sitting there waiting. It's so. One half mile. Leave the road. guys that's gonna be it for the day thank you so much for watching hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed the northern corridor and uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow headed toward Calgary I would record pulling into the yard, but private property and all, I think I've learned my lesson on that one. Some companies don't like being, don't like me recording on private property, so we just won't do it everywhere and then can't get myself in any kind of trouble. I mean, I wasn't in trouble, they just asked me to remove video. Thanks again. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up. You guys rock.